uh, for today in this particular video I am going to explain on the reactions of monosaccharides okay so the important uh, there are actually four important reactions that I am going to discuss here in this video and those are the important reactions which are used by ML Fisher during the course of his carbohydrate studies and the first reaction as you can see here is oxidation reaction now when an aldehyde group of an aldose okay before we talk about this now sugars we know that they may be classified as reducing or non-reducing sugars where based on their reactivity with tolerance uh, benedict or fellings reagent now if a sugar is oxidized by these reagent then it is referred to as a reducing reagent and we know that most of the monosaccharide molecules they are they are the monosaccharides they are also referred to as the reducing uh, reagents because they are able to because the oxidant it gets reduced in the reaction by these mono by these sugar molecules or monosaccharides so when what happened when an aldehyde group of an aldose is oxidized to a carboxylic acid the product is called as is referred to as the aldonic acid and uh, for example in uh, benedict's reagent it can oxidize aldehydes adjacent to the oh group now as you can see here in this example this is an aldose why because it contain an aldehyde group if this aldehyde group of an aldose it gets oxidized to a carboxylic acid here all right then the product this product formed is referred to as the aldonic acid and as you can see in this uh, example here in the case of glucose when the aldehyde group it gets oxidized to a carboxylic group then it is referred to the glucose is referred the product which is formed from the uh, from this glucose molecule is referred to as the gluconic acid now because of uh, these secondary hydroxyl groups here which are present all right in carbon number two three and four in case of these sugar molecules okay in these monosaccharides because of the presence of these secondary hydroxyl functions that is why the amyl oxidizing agents such as the hypobromide is also used for this conversion of an aldose to an aldonic group so since this is a ribose after uh, treating with hypobromide then we will get the product which is ribonic acid okay since here you can see this is the aldehyde group and it gets oxidized to the carboxylic group so this will be a ribonic acid now what happen if both the ends of an aldose it gets oxidized to a carboxylic acid then this product is referred to as the aldaric acid as you can see here in the example in case of glucose molecule when both the ends they get oxidized to uh, it gets oxidized to carboxylic acid then this product is referred to as the glucaric acid now by converting an aldose to an aldaric acid okay to its corresponding aldaric acid derivative then the ends of the chain it becomes identical you can see it becomes identical here in the case of glucose as well so the these type of molecules they form the these aldaric acids they are achiral okay which are of course they not optically active since they have the identical groups at both ends as you can see so all the monosaccharide molecules such as ribose xalose allose galactose glucose these compound these sugar molecules yield achiral aldaric acids which are not optically active so uh, next we come to the uh, second 
reaction that is the reduction reaction of monosaccharides. Next here, the second reaction is a reduction reaction. Okay, and what happened here? The it converts an aldehyde group to an alcohol. Okay, in case of reduction reaction, the aldehyde group it gets reduced to an alcohol group, producing a sugar alcohol. This end product is a sugar alcohol which are also called alditols okay and as you can see in this case in this example where the glucose it gets reduced to the glucitol and these sugar alcohols they are also referred to as sorbitol so this molecule is referred to as the deglucitol or desorbitol now what happened just now i had uh mentioned that in case of aldaric acid what happened both ends of the sugar molecule it gets oxidized to carboxylic acid okay it forms the aldaric acid where both the ends are identical so in this case also when the when a sugar molecule it gets the aldehyde group it gets reduced to an alcohol group now both the ends they are identical all right so sodium borohydride reduction of an aldose it makes the end of the resulting aldi alditol chain okay identical so thereby accomplishing the same configurational change produced by the oxidation of an aldaric acid okay accomplishing the same the here the same configurational change all right produced by the oxidation reaction of an aldaric acid because we get the same here also in this case both the ends they are identical now uh, next we come to the third reaction that is the osazone formation coming to the third reaction as i said the osazone formation now Osazones, they are uh, those, they are a class of carbohydrate derivatives, okay, which are found in organic chemistry. These osazones, they form when the reducing sugars, okay, for example, here the D-glucose, are reacted with excess of phenylhydrazine compound, okay, reacted with excess of phenylhydrazine at uh, boiling temperatures. Now the Osazone's formation reaction was developed by a famous German chemist that is Emil Fischer to identify those aldose sugars differing in configuration only at the alpha carbon. Alright, so here the Osazone formation reaction, the equation it shows the general mode of the Osazone reaction which affects an alpha carbon oxidation with the formation of with the formation of a bisphenylhydrazone. Alright, you can see here the bisphenylhydrazone commonly known as the Osazone and this formation it allows two sugars of um, two sugars of closely related structures to give the same osazone all right as you can see in this example the d glucose and d mannose both if treated with the excess amount of phenylhydrazine they form the same osazone now Glucosazone and fructosazone also, for example, they are identical. Since the reaction, it requires a free carbonyl group, alright, it requires a free carbonyl group, so only reducing sugars, they can form osazone. This is the point to be noted or to remember that the only the reducing sugars, they can form osazone. 
For example, like sucrose, since it is not a reducing sugar, it is unable to form osazone, okay, because it is non-reducing. Uh, you can see that from the example of D-glucose and d mannose so the use of osazone reaction to uh, D-glucose and d mannose molecule demonstrates that these compounds, they differ in configuration only at carbon number 2. Now, the mechanism, it actually involves two steps, okay? It involves two steps, that is the first step and here the second step. Now, each of which, the first and the second step, each of which forms one of the phenyl hydrozone functionalities. You can see in the first step, we get the hydrozone, phenyl hydrozone functionalities, and in the second step, we get two. All right, so we get one more here in carbon number two. Now, in the first step, a molecule of phenyl hydrozone uh, phenyl hydrazine it reacts with the car carbonyl group here all right it reacts with the carbonyl group on the sugar molecule to form a phenyl hydrazone by elimination of water molecule and the second step it involves the it involves two molecules okay all right here two molecules of phenyl hydrazine the first oxidize the hydroxyl group on the reactive alpha carbon atom here on the reactive alpha carbon to a carbonyl group and the second molecule here it then forms a hydrazone with it so remember the first molecule here it uh, reacts with the hydroxyl group on the reactive alpha carbon here this is the alpha carbon and the second one it forms a hydrazone with it so we finally get the osazone molecule all right so this is the general step in osazone formation now we come to the uh, next important reaction of monosaccharides that is chain shortening and lengthening so in uh, chain shortening and lengthening in this reaction now as you can see here the rough degradation is a method for shortening a carbohydrate chain by a single car by a single carbon all right so a rough degradation is a method for shortening a carbohydrate chain by a single carbon so in this method for example as you can see in this case a sugar it gets oxidized to carboxylic acid with bromine water and then oxidation with iron sulfate and oxygen it liberates carbon dioxide all right it liberates carbon dioxide so this is the rough degradation method and it is a two-step process that begins with the bromine water oxidation of an aldose to its aldonic acid and then treatment of aldonic acid with the hydrogen peroxide and ferric sulfate to which then oxidizes the carboxyl group to carbon dioxide and gives an aldose here, as you can see, it gives back an aldose with one less carbon atom. You see here these four groups here, they remain the same. But as you can compare it with these two, now one carbon atom is less in, the, in this one. So the treatment of aldonic acid with hydrogen peroxide and ferric sulfate, it oxidizes the carboxyl group to carbon dioxide and gives an aldose with one less carbon atom so here in this case this is the d-glucose molecule which gets oxidized to d-gluconic acid and the final product is d-arabinose
Okay, so here we see that uh, this rough degradation is a two-step process that gives rise to the formation of the product which is with one less carbon atom. All right. So it is a method for shortening a carbohydrate chain by a single carbon atom. Whereas in chain lengthening we have Kiliani Fisch Fischer synthesis. All right. So the Kiliani Fischer synthesis is a method for extending a carbohydrate chain by a single carbon atom as in this case in this example you can see you can compare this aldos here and this one you can see we get extra carbon atom by one more chain it has lengthened the chain it gets uh, lengthened by one more carbon atom here so it is a method for extending a carbohydrate chain by a single carbon and it involves the addition of cyanide to the open chain aldehyde in case of aldehyde in case of aldoses because this example is for aldose so in case of aldose you see here it uh, involves the addition of cyanide into an open chain aldehyde which is then partially reduced and then get hydrolyzed to give a new aldehyde all right with one more carbon atom added being added to the chain and the kiliani fischer synthesis it lengthens an aldose carbon chain by adding one more carbon atom to the aldehyde n all right not anywhere else but to the aldehyde n of the aldose so this is a chain lengthening and actually in case of Kiliani Fischer synthesis we have uh, a cyanohydrin molecule which will form as a mixture of compounds all right two compounds that is diastereomers and thus we will get uh, two diastereo two diastereomeric imines and finally we will get two diastereoisomers aldehyde all right so that is uh, i did not show here just to simplify this um, reaction but actually the cyanohydrin here is formed as a mixture of stereoisomers at the new chiral carbon at the new chiral center here Okay, it, then that is why it results in the formation of two new aldoses.